So when I travel and speak, I get a lot of questions around my very first job after I got my PhD. Some of my best experiences, some of my best lessons come from that very first job. So today, in today's video, I'm gonna answer some common questions around my very first job after my PhD. Hey everybody, Dave Gilton, the Returning Science. Today I am answering some questions about my very first job, or the very first job I got after my PhD. Now I didn't do a postdoc. Uh, I decided in my last year uh, as a graduate student that I did not want to become a physics professor, that instead I, don't want to, I wanted to work in industry, and I decided a postdoc was probably not the best way to start that career. I ended up getting a job at a laser company called SDL Incorporated in San Jose, California in the United States uh, in what's often termed Silicon Valley. The specialization was semiconductor lasers. That's what we did uh, and, and products built around those. And we had a few really big hits that were big in the telecommunications market. And so uh, several years after I started working there, while I was still there, our company was acquired by JDS Uniphase, a much larger company that was, uh, did a lot of products for fiber optic communications. Now that job, uh, even now, 20 so years later, is still one of the most exciting I've ever had. And it has some of the, the best stories and the best lessons from my entire career. So with that, let's just move right into the questions for today. First question. How did I get that first job? Well, I have to start with how did I target the companies I was going after in the first place? Now, I worked in a lab that did some pretty fundamental physics research. And so I had to think pretty carefully about if I want to go into industry, how do I find companies that will appreciate the experience that I had working in a physics lab? Well, since I worked in laser spectroscopy, I had a lot of experience working with lasers as scientific instruments. And so I decided my targets for the, my first job would be the companies that make these instruments. So then I had to figure out how do I learn about these companies? How do I figure out what they're doing? And I came across trade journals as a great uh, opportunity. Now these are not like peer reviewed journals that we publish that we're used to publishing our science research in. These are business to business uh, publications where companies will publish articles that are more like um, advertisements of the new products and the new technologies that they're coming out with. So it was a great place for somebody like me, a PhD physicist, uh, to try and find where they're developing new things. And I happened across one one day. It was an excellent find. It was written by an engineering manager at the company I ultimately got that job from. And not only did he describe a new tunable laser they were working on, which I found really interesting and probably irrelevant for my experience, but he mentioned they were collaborating with uh, a researcher who knew my advisor and had po they had postdoc post together many years before. So I thought, this is a great connection. So I talked to my advisor. She introduced me to the guy at the National Labs. After a phone call, he said, you know, I'd be happy to refer you to uh, this person who we're collaborating with at this, at this company, SDL. And so that got me a phone call with the manager who had written this article. And we talked about my skills, my background. Now, they didn't have any jobs at the time, but at least there was a connection. Now, there was one more really critical thing that was a critical step towards me getting that job. I had actually been cultivating contacts at several of the companies that I was targeting in that geographical area. And once I had four or five people who were uh, returning my phone calls, uh, I just bought a plane ticket to fly out to California reserved a hotel room and figured it'd be much better to try and get a job if I actually meet them face to face. So then I called them up and said, I'm going to be there in two weeks. Is it okay if I stop by and just take 20, 30, or min 30 minutes of your time? It'd be great to meet you in person since I'll be in the area. And all of them agreed. So now all of a sudden I had 30 minute meetings with all of my contacts, including the one at this company that where I ultimately got the job. My contact there actually set me up to talk to a few other people at the company. So it was kind of a mini informal interview, no job description, but I stayed in contact with them. And after a couple of months, they agreed to bring me on for a three month contract. They still didn't have a job opening, but I had made a good enough impression. They brought me in. So I actually moved out there on a three month contract. After two months, I turned it into a permanent position and that was my first job. Second question, what are some of the skills that were most valuable in that first job? Well, when I started that job, the first thing that I was doing was helping to complete a government contract that was tasked with delivering a, a breadboard laser system. So a bunch of different parts bolted onto a board that had to function all together to produce a, a desired output. 
So the work was actually pretty similar to the kinds of things I did during my, uh, my PhD. I wasn't doing science, but the work was very much the same, trying to get this system together, uh, tune it up and get it to work the way it needed to. Now this was a really interesting contract. Uh, this was a one-off project, not product development, but of course it allowed us to develop some technologies that we could then commercialize into products. That was the great thing about this, about this government contract. Uh, but some of the, so some of the skills that were valuable were much like what uh, I had developed uh, in my PhD: an understanding of laser technologies and nonlinear optics, uh, the hands-on skills to actually bolt these parts together and align the optics and and get that to work, an understanding of the test equipment uh, and a lot of the instrumentation that's involved. So those are some of the skills, the technical skills that I found useful. But some of the most important strengths, the things that I thought were most important in that job were actually not really technical strengths at all, but they were things I developed during my PhD. Um, so I had to complete this project pretty much on my own with another colleague who was also a relatively new PhD, but we didn't have anyone who had the time or you know to tell us just what to do. So the independence that we had developed during our PhDs um, the ability to learn on our own, that confidence that we could tackle a project, something nobody else had done and no one was going to tell us just how to do it and we had to figure it out ourselves. Those are some of the most important skills, strengths that I had developed during my PhD and those were probably the most valuable during that first year at that job. Question number three, what was a typical day like? What did you do in a typical day? Well, during the first few months after I started that job, I was working on the breadboard project, the government contract deliverable that I described. Uh, and that was pretty much spending all day in the lab trying to get that system together, get it working, test it, make sure that it was verify it was working the way we needed. Uh, but after a few months, we finished that and delivered that, and then we started focusing a lot more, my job started focusing a lot more on the products that we were going to develop using the technology we had developed through that breadboard. And the time that I spent at work shifted quite a bit from time in the lab to time spent working with people to specify all the different aspects of uh, these devices that made them products. For example, uh, working with uh, a designer on the enclosure. You know, the breadboard that we did didn't need any fancy enclosure. It was just a bunch of parts bolted onto a, a board and they just had to function. But now that we were doing a product, we needed somebody to design uh, a nice looking uh, enclosure that was both functional and stylish and fit kind of the, the style that the marketing group had in mind. Uh, had to think about the driver for this laser, the electronics that went with it. We weren't going to produce it, but there was a third party vendor that was going to design that. And so we had, had to talk with them about what features did we need? Uh, what would the cabling look like? What was the interface going to be? Uh, we had to put together a bill of materials. What parts go in this? Can we source all these parts? Uh, is this manufacturable? Meeting with people that would be building them in manufacturing. We even had to work on things like what information will go on the catalog page. Within the first year, there was quite a big shift from only working in the lab and after a few months to all these broader uh, kinds of things. More time at my desk, more time on the phone, more time working with other people uh, to help specify all these different things that a product needs that make a product different than uh, a science project. Fourth question, how did the size of the company impact the experience of your first job? For me, the size made a huge difference. So this company uh, that I started at was relatively small, it was around 500 people, but the group that I was working in was a systems group that was, uh, I forget, maybe 20 people. It was relatively small. And so I think it made a, a huge difference because the attitude within that was not one of a uh, big company, we have lots of different skill sets and so we find somebody with just the right training and background and experience to do the job. Instead, the attitude was more, hey, we've got a new thing we need somebody to do, who can do it? Who's willing to step up and try something they've never done before? And I found that fit me so much better and I really appreciated the confidence that my management had in me to, to try it. I didn't have to come in the expert. They were willing to let me try something and learn something new. I just thought that was really cool uh, and a huge part of the experience. But really, I think that was not just the size of the company. I think that was also the culture of the company. So because semiconductor lasers were their expertise, 
you know, it's very sophisticated, uh, complex processes. And so this company had a lot of PhD scientists and engineers working there already. And so there was this whole culture built around people that were pretty independent, uh, could learn well, and were willing to tackle problems they'd never seen before. I think it was not just the size, but also the culture that made that such a wonderful experience uh, for me and my interests. Question number five, how did that first job impact your career path? Well, for me, it had an enormous impact and a very positive impact. The way I describe it, I started that job in the lab, working in the lab almost full time. But I, I was frequently figuratively sticking my head out of the lab saying, hey, this is great, but what are we doing next? And really asking lots of questions uh, beyond just the technology development that was in the lab. And I was very fortunate to have a really great manager who uh, appreciated that, who respected my interests, and allowed me to start doing a number of different things to take, uh, take the lead in many different aspects of the product development uh, and ultimately start to get uh, some people working on my team and develop a product development team of my own. That ultimately is the experience that led to uh, a few years down the road of me ultimately being a site manager and leading an entire R&D team uh, at, a, at a satellite location for a larger company. That was a huge, uh, huge part of that development. Uh, but also that led to me being allowed to go visit with customers, which was something that I found I enjoyed, I never expected. And that led to a whole new uh, dimension to my career in kind of the last seven to eight years, uh, more customer focused roles, working in business development and product management. You know, the roots to all of these things in the last 10 to 15 years of my career absolutely come from that very first job. So those are my answers to those common first job questions. I hope you found them valuable as you go out and search for your first job or your next job and develop your own answers to those same questions. If you like this video, please click that like icon below. It'll help me, but more importantly, you will help other people who could benefit from this video because more likes means YouTube shows it to more people. I'd also be grateful if you'd share this video with your friends and your colleagues. And if you'd like to get more videos like this yourself, click that subscribe button and ring that notification bell. I try to make about two of these every month to help you build the career you really want. Thanks for watching. Now let's get out there and turn science into things people need.